four, three, two, one. Hey gang, and uh, welcome back to Alien Protocols. We are very lucky uh, to have uh, the legendary UFO researcher, um, Dr. Bruce Maccabee. He's an author, a physicist. Um, he's been there from the beginning with Kenneth Arnold all the way to recent uh, cases. He's worked with the CIA and he's been uh, really a a crucial figure in UFO history. And uh, thank you for joining us again, Dr. Maccabee. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, um, We wanted to talk about um, Skylab, do a little short episode on the Skylab 3 case from 1973. This is really an amazing case. Would you give us your thoughts and insights on the case and maybe uh, brief people a little bit on um, what Skylab is in the background a little bit? Uh, Skylab was uh, the first laboratory in space put up around 1972 I think it was and the idea was they would have astronauts cycle in and through the uh, through the, the satellite so to speak they'd go up stay a period of time and go back and somebody a new group of astronauts would, be, would then take over and uh, so on and so this happened to be the third group of astronauts <coughs> and uh, it involved uh, the first scientist on board, the first, uh, a professional scientist on board the Skylab. Well, now, what makes this, come, brings us into the, into, uh, of UFO interest is, while they were on one of their orbits, uh, they saw a red object that was, appeared to be following them. Uh, and one of the astronauts actually took pictures of it. Hmm. So you can you can see on my website, brumag.mysite.com, the full story on this uh, uh, Skylab 3, along with the pictures that were taken. The, the first three pictures kind of show a dot of red. Uh, the fourth picture shows a structure, which uh, is an image structure, which is quite puzzling. It has been suggested that it was just a wobble of the camera, but the camera was shooting pictures at one two hundred fifty of a second. Mm. And it's a, there's too much structure in this image for all that motion to have happened in the two hundred fifty of a second. Wow. Yeah. And there are no red satellites up there. And this was not close to the horizon where you can get solar reddening, light coming through the atmosphere. Turns red and makes red, makes red light. For example, um, the redness of the uh, eclipsed moon uh, is a dull red as a result of light coming from the sun going past through the Earth's atmosphere. Or any time you see a, a red sunset or a red sunrise, you're seeing the same thing: reddening of the light by essentially scattering all the other colors out of the way, leaving only the red light to travel through to some place that gets illuminated. Well, this was up too high above the atmosphere to be a, a reddening due to the sun reflecting off something. So the red was, had to be, it shouldn't have been there. And so the, so are you saying that the red had to be internally generated red? That color had to come from the object itself? Either that or it was painted red. Okay. And illuminated by sun, but up above the, far up above the atmosphere boundaries, so, so to speak. Fascinating. So either it was a red, a red source of light or a red satellite or something painted red, but there was nothing up there at the time and still isn't, which is painted red. Uh, and there wasn't anything up there that had a red light attached to it either. So we don't know what that thing was, but you, you can believe that the astronauts are telling the truth and the film shows that they, uh, Definitely saw something up there that shouldn't have been there. Well, you are a photo analyst, so you must have analyzed all those photos really carefully. They said it was following them, and you know, if it was a glitch or something, you'd maybe expect it to be in one or two images, and they'd be similar in the two images. But in these images, they're different. Um, and the last one that I've seen this, it has kind of a weird Y sort of shape. It has very structural kind of qualities. Were you yeah, able to see anything or something like that? Like something like that. Wow. Fascinating. W were you yeah. able to t tell any distances, sizes, any of that? Well, 
one of the astronauts time said so they're, they're traveling along in their orbit they're about to go into the, into sunset where the, the earth blocks the light getting to the uh, skyline and this object seemed to go dark about five seconds after they went into sunset and knowing the speeds of the satellite at that time he estimated that the, the object was you know, 30 miles or something like that behind them uh, you could make it out. That was a uh, that was a guess. He had timed how long it took between when they went into the sunset and when the uh, red light turned off. Under the assumption the red light thing was also going into sunset. Wow, that's fascinating and an interesting way to calculate the uh, the time and the distance and stuff. Um, were there any further conclusions or any other corroborative evidence on that at all? Was there any kind of radar or um, anything else? I know, and unfortunately, it, ha it happened at a time when uh, the, um, the onboard recorder was not being run. So they had to, they were asked about, they, they reported it to, uh, uh, well, where they were at the time it happened, they were out of uh, communication. When they got into communication again, um, they recorded it, and subsequently after they landed, they were being debriefed to ask about it. Uh, but they, but the onboard recorder was not operating at the time they had it, so unfortunately, there was only what they remembered available. Wow. And of course, the, the camera remembered everything. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Fortunately. They had, they had said that this red thing was uh, pulsating or flashing at them, flashing. Wow. And wow. two of the pictures show uh, usually bright red dot, the first and the third picture shows a very faint dot. That's if uh, Owen K. Garriott was the uh, scientist, uh, geologist, I think, on board the uh, spacecraft and took the pictures. And a few hours trying to document the fact that the uh, light was changing in brightness level, pulsing, and they would make sense to me to take to, the first two show a bright dot, the third one shows a faint dot, which could be his effort to, to, to indicate that this thing was changing brightness level at the time. But the fourth one is completely out of the box because of its shape. We don't know what the hell it was. Wow, wow. Now, I just tried to say that the shape is due to vibration of the camera, but as I pointed out earlier, the camera can't vibrate fast enough do this maybe several you have to go along a direction and then in another direction and in another direction in order to uh, make the shape of this image wow yeah. were, were you asked to analyze that footage for any uh, specific agency or group or are you just you no. it on your own um interesting were you able to determine do you feel it was an actual structured craft or was it a light um something more, uh, you know, maybe a light phenomena of some kind. Do you believe there was structured craft in there? It was, a, it was at least a, uh, uh, a, red, a red dot, uh, but, the, but the structure, as I, as I said, I don't think the structure comes from vibration of the camera. I think it's actually, the, the object itself somehow had this structure. Wow, fascinating, fascinating. So the object itself had that shape, and it's a really unusual shape. It's one of the most unusual shaped UFOs I've seen in the um, history and in the literature, that uh, Skylab footage. Um, well, thank you so much, Dr. McAbee, for discussing that case. Um, looking forward to talking about uh, other cases with you in the future. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.